Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are going to take a look at this meter, the Zotec ZT300AB that we talked about in the last video. This is what I would consider to be a mid-sized meter, you know, just it's hand-sized. It's not small, like the little uh, 8008, and it's not big like a fluke. You're right here in the middle. This is a nice size, fits in the hand real well. Now, you notice there's no prophylactics on this one, which is fine. Wait, what was that? Did you see that on the back? This is a Bluetooth DMM. Some people don't think that's useful. Some do. Let me give you a little demonstration. So the meter is in auto mode. What you want to do is you want to Hold this button here that says greater than two seconds for Bluetooth. And you see a little Bluetooth symbol on there now. So now we can bring in the app. And you can see we're on auto. Oh. Hang on here. Oops. I'm like some big doofus here. Give me a second. All right, no problem. I just had to restart the app. So you can see now we have... Uh, DC voltage maximum minimum frequency range <laughs> press something else here now you can see it's going to millivolts Now it's going to kilo ohms. There we go. Mega ohms. Now we're looking at diode and connectivity, capacitance. Yeah. So now we're back in auto. So what this will do, I mean, you can walk, you can look at meet readings from four different multimeters here. You can be watching voltage, current, resistance, continuity, you know, whatever you want. It's pretty cool. And it also allows you to create your own little mathematical uh, formula thing down here, which is pretty nice. Remote assistance, chat disconnected. Okay, well, that's fine. There we go. See how nice that looks? It gives you a graph and it allows you to record. You can go up into your settings and uh, change how it's going to record. Now, here's the one part where it's going to get a little tricky. If you scan that QR code right there, it's going to take you to some jumbled mess of Chinese characters that I, not being a Chinese speaker, can't read and you probably can't either. So, here's what you do. You go to the old Play Store, whatever Apple's equivalent of it is, and you type in here, E, Bull Multimeter, and it will bring up this guy here, Bluetooth DMM, and that's how we connected with it. So, I just wanted to make sure I showed that to you and pointed it out. Now, this meter comes with, you know, your standard uh, set of cheap probes, uh, thermocouple, some batteries, runs on two AA's, we'll see that pretty soon. But, you know, when we do multimeter testing here, we always use the same set of probes. We've been testing meters now for going on seven years, and we use the same set of probes because that way all of our measurements, all of our readings, and whoops, all of our conclusions are based strictly on the multimeter and not on readings being altered by different sets of probes. That's all. A single set of probes to test meters gives us consistency across the way. There's our light. All right, we're going to use our 5584M voltage standard. It's right now set for 2.5 volts and it's been a 
she's been warming up for a while. So you can see there we got two point, well, we will have 2.514 there. And now let's bring in the, uh, the multimeter app. And there you can see 2.54. Now I will change this to the five volt. up to 7.53 and there we are at 10 and you can see here you have the graph very nice now you can save this see just whatever you want to do you can save it to a CSV file and then that might become quite useful if you're trying to troubleshoot something or, you know, just work on a design. It's a very nice feature in a low-cost multimeter. These are selling for about $40. So, that's pretty cool. I'm impressed with that. All right, let us move on. All right, so now we're going to look at some diodes and capacitors. So, let's put this up here. And we'll put it in capacitor mode first. There we are. Here, I'll bring my my phone in so that you can see that as well. One second. I know. Glare, glare, glare. Hopefully I can stem the glare a little bit. There we go. All right. Let's test the first one. 100 nano coming out at 114. Perfectly cool. Next one. 50 micro coming out of 52 amp good and the next one yep. let's jump up to the big one here let's read it and the winner is that's a thousand microfarad coming out 977 you're going to see that you know, manufacturing tolerances and whatnot. All right, let's go. Uh, diode test. All right, here's our first one. This should be a little silicon junction diode. And it is. This is just a larger one for power transformers. Yes, yes, I want to continue reading data. And now we'll move on to some LEDs. The red one should be the lowest. It should light at about 1.7 to 1.85 volts. 1.805. Yellow one should be about the same. Yeah, 1.9. Green one should get right around 1.9 to 2. The blue should be right around 2 volts. 2.5, half a little. And the white should be somewhere close to the blue. Yep, 2.6. So, I mean, it's all looking really good. Modern multimeters run off of an IC, so there's generally not a problem with them being out of spec or out of tune. Unless... All right, what do you say we have a look inside? We'll remove the uh, battery. First, it uses two AA batteries. Which I like in a meter. Some people like nine volts. I like double A's. This little uh, e-durable electric screwdriver is right up my alley. It has buttons. It's not like that other electronic screwdriver somebody sent me that I couldn't figure out how to use or all you had to do is start turning it because I'm far too stupid for that buttons are more up my alley all right spudger I don't think there's any more Wow. 
Interesting. That is like really, really sealed well. Give me a second. This took a lot of prying. Gentle prying. This case is very, very well fitted. I don't see any stamps to tell what type of plastic it is, but I'm guessing it's probably ABS or something along those lines. I don't, I don't think it's glass reinforced fiber. All right, so as we're looking at this, let me get some more light. All right, let's start at the top and work our way down. We've got an eight megahertz crystal here. We have our sounder. And then over here we have our Bluetooth chip. ZYDC and DD 99E6 maybe. I'm far too blind to look at that with the naked eye. Here you go. DO9986. Okay. There we have our main multimeter chip. Now it's interesting. Usually these battery compartments stay in the outer case and then they're touched on here with springs. This one they decided to just solder it down and it's just kind of flapping in the breeze there. We got a little diode protection circuit going on here. We have some MELFs here and a PTC here. We've got our milliamp fuse 600 milliamp at 250 volts and then we've got our 10 amp 250 volt fuse here and if you look here you can see our current shunt which has been you know trimmed and everything to be the right size to give the right readings now one thing i am noticing excuse me just look at how shiny i don't know how if you're going to be able to see it let's zoom in here maybe i can get you a better view Look at how shiny those joints are. I mean, that is some very nice solder work. But here's the thing, lead-free solder generally doesn't look like that. And I know there's not any way possible they could have gotten away with using leaded solder, so maybe there's a new lead-free solder out there. Yeah. Anyway, safety-wise, I would say this is at the top rung of the lower-cost Chinese meters. The fitted case, while it doesn't seem like much, is incredibly important. Were you to put far too many volts through this thing and blow it up, the, the case having two layers here. See that? See how deep my blade gets in there? Everything is stuck down in there. And it keeps things from it keeps the exploding parts from getting to your soft, juicy, meaty parts. You know what I'm saying? So that's a good thing to have. And you heard how well that snapped together. The inclusion of both um, some diode protection, the PTC, and the MELFs all go to show me or tell me or point towards an idea that this is well built. It's $40. I'll put a link down below where you can get yourself one if that's something you'd be interested in. And uh, I think the, the addition of Bluetooth is great. So my only question is when do we get rechargeable multimeters? I mean, it hasn't been a thing for ever, but it sure could be. Lithium batteries are everywhere. Like, for instance, let me give you a for instance. This is a guitar tuner called the Snark. This is probably the most popular one out there. They cost about 15 bucks. You clip them on, 
and it reads the vibrations. But they are generally powered by our old friend the 2032. Okay, first generation. Second generation snark, same thing, All right? Clips on, reads the vibrations. This one has a metronome function and pitch calibration. But look at that, micro USB port. No more of this, now only rechargeable batteries. So I'd like to start seeing them in multimeters. And I expect that we will relatively soon. Of course, I don't know. Because, you know, I'm here, they're there, and well, I don't work for them. Let's get this bad boy back in here and get our our meter all put back together. And make sure it still works, which it does. All right. So this is the Zotec ZT300AB. I'd like to thank Zotec for sending that out to us free of charge for our consideration. I would like to thank you for watching the video and hanging out with me. I wouldn't be here without you. So, do me a favor today. Leave a comment, even if you just say hi. I'm trying to see how the algorithm plays with this, because now I'm being told that everything comes from comments. So, leave a comment, like I said, even if you're just saying hi. Even if you just want to say, screw you, I promise I won't yell at you. I mean, sometimes I do, but I won't this time. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out. Peace.